So for lesson nine, we are going to be learning CSS3. I think you guys are all going to really like this unit uh, because it includes animation and transition effects and a lot of really neat CSS features. So you're going to want to read through the pages in the book and then go through the lecture demo which does have a lot of information and examples in it. Uh, just showing you all sorts of things that you can do uh, with all of the different uh, CSS styling commands that are part of CSS3. And then there are links to interactive examples that you can practice with. Uh, so we go through uh, some that are review, okay, like uh, the border radius, and then quite a few that are brand new. Uh, we also cover a couple different ways to apply color. So these are a little bit more advanced. And uh, RGB with the A on the end, a stands for alpha, which is transparency. So you can make the color more transparent. So there's some kind of neat effects there. Uh, you can also create gradients using CSS3. So I've got uh, pretty much all the commands in here in addition to lots of examples for you to look at. And then we get into a review of shadows, which we have been using for a while, and some new text features. So as you go through this, uh, when possible, I do have interactive examples. Uh, I also have the links to those interactive sites. And uh, I try to include newer features. And this filter feature is new. So instead of going into Photoshop or Lunapic and changing your image, you can actually apply a filter through CSS and adjust the image. And so uh, for you to see how that works, I've got these little sliders. And if you move a slider, it will change the image and it will show you what filter it applied and what the setting is. Okay, so uh, basically what happens when you apply these is it goes back to normal and then <laughs> it applies the filter. So yeah, probably doing a lot of blur on your filters is not something that you're gonna want, but you can kind of get a feel for how these filters work by playing with the uh, sliders here. And the drop shadow is kind of cool too. That's the only one that you can do two sliders on. Then we get into transformations, uh, which I also have quite a few interactive sliders here. So you can kind of see what happens when you rotate uh, now, if you change the origin, what happens then, that's the point that it rotates from. So if you rotate after changing the origin, the little box is going to look like it's going wild, but you have changed the point it's rotating from. So it's no longer rotating from the center. Uh, so here are some additional examples. And you guys can kind of go through here. Um, I do have pages that I created so you can see what happens when you change the perspective. So right now it's 200. Okay, so we can change it and drag it all the way the other direction so you can kind of see how that looks. Okay, and I will let you go through and play with the rest of this. Uh, and the examples are to help you understand what the settings do. Then your textbook assignment is going to involve uh, using some of the transformation, transition, and animation effects. So there are several files that you're going to be downloading. 
and uh, then you are going to be making changes to the files and adding a little animation to them as well. So uh, I tried in the here to highlight uh, things that you need to add so it's a little easier to find. Uh, you will notice that I've got the videos in here as well. Uh, that quote page that you worked on in task two, you will be adding animation to in task three. Uh, and because we had a couple different tasks uh, that involved this particular file, I do have a PDF that shows you the entire file with all the changes. Uh, then you're going to create a 3D cube. And so you can download the PDF or you can kind of look at it here in the iframe. You know, whatever you prefer. And when you view it offline, it should look like this. Now, if it does not look like this, <laughs> there's a problem in your code uh, that we need to fix. Uh, then you're gonna create a ball and you are going to make it bounce up and down. And this is all the code that you need to do that. Uh, for the next one, you are going to take your song snippet file and you are going to do all sorts of fun animation to that file. And so I've kind of highlighted in yellow uh, the different animation and CSS commands that you need to add. So that's pretty much the assignment. And once you finish that, you're going to work on your lab assignment. And the lab assignment uh, has you adding animation to two of your existing pages. So the Flexbox model page, you are going to copy from lesson six into this week's lesson folder. And you're also going to copy your form from lesson eight. And then you're going to apply animation to both. So the directions have you start with the Flexbox model. You're going to call it Flexbox model with animation. And you need to apply some animation uh, to make the boxes rock when you point at them. Okay, and so to accomplish that, you're going to need to use the add keyframe CSS with transform and rotate. You're also going to have to add section hover in order to play the animation. So it's it should look something like this. Hopefully I can get the link open. But when you point, it should do something like that. Okay, that's all you need to do to that file. Uh, then for your form, you are going to animate the title. So it's going to kind of slide in. And then you're going to animate uh, the elements that are in the form and have them slide in as well. Uh, and then for the very bottom, the button on your form, when you point at it, it should rotate. So the various uh, commands that you need to add are highlighted. And you can take a look. So you can kind of see how that slid in. All of the other items also slid in. Uh, when you point to submit and reset, they should get bigger and rotate. But I'll show you the sliding part again. And then part two, uh, you are going to download resizable boxes and you're going to be adding the CSS that will allow us to drag a box and make it bigger. Uh, this is also uh, going to show you kind of the difference between using cover and contain. Uh, when you make those boxes, those background boxes bigger, you should notice that 
the background that has cover, uh, the entire background displays the whole time, but the one with contain, if you make the box bigger, um, sometimes because can't contain is only going to get larger if it can stay in proportion, sometimes the uh, background color shows through. Uh, so you should see that difference. Part three, you're going to add animation to your assignment page. I do not care what the animation is. You're gonna add an animation keyframe or a transition effect to your page. Animate whatever you want, okay? And then you'll update all of your links. So that is the assignment for this week. I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with this one. Um, it tends to be one of the favorites of students. Uh, so have a great time, have fun, and let me know if you have any questions.